Hi everybody. So in this video, I am very specifically using the Llama V2 model uh, and then having it make some direct API calls. And I know there's software that exists such as like Langchain and Langflow and other pieces of software that uh, can act as a middleware for this type of functionality. But for me, it's important to understand how to do it um, like without any sort of middleware, uh, anything like that, how to just build it directly into the model to make API calls directly in the model. And it's not hard. So <clears throat> essentially we have our collab notebook here um, and then have a few pip installs. Uh, these first two are for, because we're quantizing the model. So uh, transformers uh, at optimum and then auto GPTQ. And then we need transformers requests, which is how we're actually gonna be doing the API calls. So this handles like all of the API requests itself. And then we load the model in and then we're just loading the model in like straight as we normally would. Um, here's the model, uh, model name, model path. It's a quantized model, quantized Llama 2 model. By the, it's quantized by the bloke. Uh, and then I give it an initial prompt. Tell me about AI. Uh, a few system instructions that it's helpful, stay safe, um, and then make sure that it's not harmful, um, et cetera. And then the max outputs uh, for the model, like uh, max tokens, the temperature, uh, top P and top K, and repetition penalty. Uh, and then we run that and then we get our response back from the model. Uh, and then it uh, tells us more about, it, it tells us about AI as we requested. And then here is where uh, the like um, actual API calls come in. And then it's, so it's very straightforward, right? The very first thing that I did was I, I went to this website, epiphany.io, uh, and then they have uh, top 15 free APIs. Uh, and then they have like APIs that you can use for testing and APIs that uh, you can use without a key or authentication. Uh, and then so I'm just starting there, real simple. And then so uh, we have a few public APIs and then I just grabbed like a few from here. Uh, and then the first one that I grabbed was like a joke one. Uh, and then so it's just a joke API. Uh, and then the very first thing is just defining the API. Uh, and then it's just very straightforward, ping the API, return uh, like the joke and the punchline, uh, or else return an error. Uh, and then for the prompt, it's very straightforward, right? It's just um, if the essentially what this is, is it's all of the model inputs. So all of the inputs for the model telling the model what the model would need to do, that same top P, same number of max tokens, et cetera. Um, uh, but then it's just telling it that if we include tell me a joke in all lowercase uh, like this, tell me a joke, then it'll tell us a joke. <laughs> it'll it'll ping the, this API uh, and I can do it right now in real time. It takes about, I think, 20 seconds or so for it to ping the API. That's quick. Uh, what do you give a sick lemon? Lemonade. Uh, it took three seconds in order to do that. So we could, you know, just do it again. Uh, what did the traffic light say to the car as it passed? Don't look, I'm changing. Uh, and then so... Uh, we can see it's actually pinging this API here uh, and then returning these requests. And then so another one of the um, APIs that it had was uh, for like random user. And this is a random user API. Uh, and then for this it, one, I, I have to tell it up front here. I'm just telling it to like when it gives us the information to format the data as a string. So uh, give us like first name, last name, gender, country, and email for the user that it makes up. And then it's going to be making up these users, right? So it's like all made up data. Uh, and then this one takes about 21 seconds to run. But we can see that we have our user here. I'm going to go ahead and, and run it. Um, and then so again, all of the same uh, parameters for the model, the top P, top K, temperature, etc. cetera. Uh, and then that took about seven seconds this time. Fantastic. And then we have our synthetic data or made up data if we wanted to in this instance, Francisco Santiago, who is a male from Spain. And his email address is francisco.santiago at example.com. <laughs> and uh, so just really straightforward. That's all that that does, uh, all that particular API does. Um, and then so in this next instance here, we have the, like, it's this same same thing, right? I just copied and pasted um, this generate random user. But, like, rather than putting in, like, the, the key for it to trigger the API, I want to just talk to the model, right? So I just say hello. And hello, my name is Sarah. I'm a software engineer. I've been working in the field for about five years now, and I've been lucky enough to get on a variety of projects. One thing I've noticed is it's good engineering, so it's just giving some output, right? <laughs> like some uh, randomized output. Um, and I can just, you know, how are you today? 
Uh, and then if I do this, same thing, I'm gonna get a randomized output because this whole time I'm utilizing the model, right? I'm doing well, thank you for asking. It's always nice to connect with you. What would you like to chat about something specific or just enjoy some small talk? Uh, and then let's say, um, generate random user. And then in this instance, rather than calling the model, it's gonna, call, it's gonna make the API call. Uh, and then we're gonna get the same output here. Bam, J Bassa, gender male, country Netherlands, and email address of J Bassa. Uh, and then so we can switch back and forth. If I give it the proper keyword commands, it's gonna return back the uh, response from the API. If, it's, if I don't, if I give it just a normal prompt as I would, it's gonna operate as a normal LLM model. Uh, and then so, we could utilize this you know, for lots of different functions. Uh, and then again, it's case sensitive. Like it has to be that generate random user, all lowercase. If I put like capital G, uh, it's not gonna work. Like it's not like it, it has to be the 100% lowercase in order for it to, to like ping the API. In this instance, it's gonna ping the, the model is gonna come back with the result. Like it's not gonna ping the API uh, for the result because of that like capital G in there so you have to get like very specific with that um and then locking that out but other than that um it's pretty cool and useful lots of different functions so and it, it does okay cool it did so like uh in this instance perhaps like because i am using the model right so like the model can in this instance um make some individual updates in this instance and and do um what it would need to do and so it looks like it, it did um but, so it's not guaranteed to work uh, unless we have the capital G in there. That's pretty cool. Um, but so overall, if you, uh, I'll leave the link to, in, to this particular collab in the description. If you want to play around with uh, Llama and this is Google Collab, free Google Collab, run, I, you have to run the T4, um, but um, free instance of Google Collab and then any APIs that you want. Um, and then you can pick the different APIs and then you just have to build out your call depending on if you need to uh, build out anything like to, to actually handle the call itself. But other than that, just uh, you can run and access any sort of APIs that you want directly using the Llama model. Um, and then so it's really cool, right? You can talk to the model or say, hey, tell me a joke. <laughs> and then at any time it's gonna uh, ping that API uh, and then tell you the joke rather than like having the model come up with a joke. So pretty cool. Uh, if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.